the big blue behemoth beside me on the bench is the new Elgu Neptune 4 Max. I previously looked at the Neptune 3 Max and it had a few weak spots that this machine absolutely addresses. I have plenty of thoughts about this, but there's one thing I want to hone in on right now. The hot end on the Neptune 3 Max was absolutely anemic for such a big machine. This one is a significantly higher flowing design and it is all metal. So I can print materials like I like to print, such as ABS and ASA, on this machine if it wasn't for the fact that this is a wide open bed slinger design. So those materials that are prone to warping really don't stand much of a chance on here. Most of the machines I usually run these materials on have their own enclosures to retain heat and to cut down on drafts, causing the parts to peel and warp off of the bed. We don't have any of that working for us on the Neptune 4 Max. And we're gonna change that thanks to the folks at Crate3D who sponsored this video. They're using their design and engineering minds to create 3D printer accessories. Starting off with a modular 3D printable enclosure for your machines. Whether you're talking about FDM machines, resin printers, you can add in air filtration for those types of machines. Whether you want to enclose a smaller machine like a Prusa Mini, or you want to go big and go home like me with the Neptune 4 Max here, the modular system allows you to build out to your needs. We'll discuss it more as we go, but I think it's probably time to get to building the enclosure. First things first, let's get this big thing out of the way so we can start putting this all together and then we'll put this in it. Future Alan here to tell you I went overboard. So stick around through this video to find out where I went wrong. <laughs> now there are one, two, ah, a lot of pieces to this whole setup. So let's dive in hard. <laughs> First things first, I'm gonna organize the parts I have so I can get a look at all of them, find each one as I'm going to need it, and also do a quick sanity check as to whether or not I have enough of them. And sure enough, despite this absolute pile in front of me, I am actually missing a couple of the bottom corners and the associated pieces that go with them. So I had to send those to printers just a moment ago. But I have enough here to move forward and start putting these pieces together to build the frame of this whole new enclosure system. The modular nature of these parts becomes evident pretty quickly. They interlock together, can be bolted together then, and create a strong and unified object. Need it bigger? Just keep on adding sections until you get to the size you need. Now don't get me wrong, producing these parts is time consuming. My studio is not set up for a print farm type situation. I did want to run the parts on the Neptune 4 Max exclusively, but I quickly realized that that was going to be too time consuming for my deadline of this video anyway. You folks almost certainly won't have a time constraint to this. Run some prints, run the next round, and just keep rolling with it till you get everything you need. For me, I had to involve all of these printers to make it happen. That's the joy of YouTube video production. I'm always on a tight timeline on every project. Anyway, we can start building this frame despite missing a couple of pieces. I can get those into this once they're done. It's the next morning, I've got these parts printed, uh, except one issue. You see, my Mercury 1.1 ran out of filament <laughs> in the middle of the night, and the runout sensor on that thing, it has one, it's not working. It was indicating no filament, but still printing. I'm printing the parts again on other machines right now. We can move forward without those. I have this absolute pile of parts. There's plenty of stuff to be doing here, so let's get this thing put together and get the Neptune 4 Max into here because this is gonna be a big thing when it's done. We're gonna start at the base and build our way up because, well, that's logical now, isn't it? As I already showed, these modular pieces just kind of don't clip together. They go together and they interlock to each other, but they don't hold that way. There is additional hardware, 832 screws and some clips that slide over the two different sections holding them together, and then screws go through those clips that then hold the pieces firmly so they won't come apart. Putting the hardware into the clips is fiddly to say the least, but I have already been informed that these are updated for the release version so that they're more of an angle and they'll be much easier to install in the files that you folks will actually get. Obviously one of the key factors here is how big do I need this thing to be to fit the Neptune 4 Max. So I pulled it off the bench and mocked it up around the machine on the floor so I knew how many sections to use on each of the axes. 
Assembly of this thing is straightforward. It's big kid Legos. Put them together, slide in the clips, screw in screws, and keep on going. Overall, it's kind of fun and calming to do. I can just keep on plugging away, have some YouTube on in the background, and put the thing together. This is definitely a place where having an electric standing desk as my workbench is a big bonus. I can lower the thing down and get to the higher points I need easily. The only problem being that as I roll forward with this assembly, this thing is getting awfully big. So when I go to move it, I almost dropped it off the edge of the bench and torqued some of the pieces and heard some cracking the prints, but they all look to be solid still. But really not that much longer, I've got an assembled frame for my modular printable accessories enclosure. Yeah, this thing is absolutely massive. Um, and fun fact for you. I miscounted and I've got a handful of parts left over. Or quite a few. And bear with me here, this is the minimum size it needs to be to fit the Neptune 4 Max. You gotta remember that machine is a bed slinger, so it's going to be slinging the bed back and forth. So you need more than just fitting the machine inside, distance from the front and the back. This is one of the things I always say when I review big machines where people underestimate how big they actually are when they, the space they take up. But it's not actually tall enough to fit the spool holder inside. So in comes the question that no YouTuber should ever ask, should I go bigger? Cause we all know the answer is yes. Let's do it. But this is a point I should step back and make here is the modularity of the printable accessories system here. I can just make it bigger. I have this big thing, but I can go bigger yet with only a few more printed parts. So if I changed from the Neptune 4 Max to an even bigger machine, I don't have to throw away my old enclosure. I can just change it a little bit and work with that, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the plethora of pieces that I produced for some reason for the Neptune 4 Max sized frame, which was way off. I didn't really do any math. I usually pride myself on doing the math, but here we are. And I produced something so darn large that it no longer fits on the bench. Not that it really did before I started expanding it. I had to get down onto the floor and just keep on putting pieces in. And when I got all said and done, I had a whopping two pieces left over that I didn't have enough extras to put in there. I also ended up at exactly the number of those clips that I needed to put this whole thing together. Totally didn't do the math on that at all. And I ended up with exactly, exactly the number I needed. I'm pretty sure at the size of this thing now, in most major US cities, I could get about 900 bucks a month for this thing. Oh, and since I went clearly overboard, I'm not gonna get to testing the Neptune 4 Max with higher temperature materials because there's no panels actually enclosing this. It's just the frame of the thing at this point. Maybe in another future video, let me know if you'd like to see that. It won't fit two Neptune Maxes at this point. I wanted to put my three Max next to the four Max, but it wasn't gonna happen. But I could fit the Neptune four Max, an Ender 3, a Neptune 4 Pro, and probably a couple other machines in there too. Now the folks at Crate3D graciously provided me acrylic panels for this project, but you can pretty well see that I went outside of the scope of the project. So they're not going to work for me. But if I wanted to keep it this size, I wouldn't have to source that large of pieces of acrylic. I could do it, but I don't have to. They do have 3D printable panels that you can put on the machine. So as long as I have enough patience and filament, I could produce this whole thing with my own printed panels and not spend the money on acrylic pieces for it. And that's an important thing to think about here is you don't have to source the acrylic, which you can get from the folks at Crate 3D, but you could just print whatever color pieces and add-ons you want. There's also accessories that go on the outside panels, both aesthetic, there's some really sick looking designs that they've created with these intricate kind of Celtic knot weaves on them, dwarven kind of inspired thing. It's sick, not really my aesthetic, but cool all the same. But they also have pegboard options, so you can hold accessories and tools, spools on the outside of the machine. I printed up a handful of the pieces that go onto the pegboard, so I can mock them up here on this one for you. We just need to shoehorn this into the pegboard holes, and then tilt. Wow, that goes in there actually really securely. And now I have a spool holder that points toward the inside of the chamber. There's also pass-through for a Bowden tube. So if you had an acrylic top panel, you could put a hole in it, have your Bowden pass through to your external spool holder and manage that from outside of the machine or go out to a dry box. And like I said, you could just keep expanding this if you wanted to. I could make a full pegboard the size of this thing if I want, 
I'm not going to though. So let's talk about what I am going to do with this thing. First and foremost, uh, once Ruby sees the monstrosity I've created, maybe live in it for a short period of time. As I said, they provided me the acrylic panels for this thing. So what I'm gonna do is shrink it down to the scale it's supposed to be at and put my original Ender 3 in it. It has an all metal hot end, a nice thick ground flat cast aluminum bed on it. It is prepped for higher temperature materials, but doesn't have an enclosure. This is gonna allow me that option. Or I've been really wanting to get back into a little bit more resin printing, and I could put a resin printer inside of here. There's this pass-through for a vent fan, so I could go into an external charcoal filtration system, cut down on the fumes, which is the primary reason that I don't resin print. The fumes really irritate me, and this system would allow me to get away from that. I was also heavily considering building a CNC in the new year, and that's almost certainly going to happen in some form or fashion. But one of the reasons I didn't want to was the mess. Dust, dirt, chips flying off of the machine. I could put it in an enclosure like this. I could scale it to the size of the machine that I'm working with and not have that stuff flying around the studio when it'll be contained in there. Now, Crate3D is launching this whole program through a Kickstarter campaign. This allows them to get input from folks like you who join backers who wanna give some input onto what accessories they might like to see from the system as it's going, giving you updated development information so they can show you and poll your ideas about things. And they have a proven track record of getting designs out there after their successful campaigns Promptly. I don't think I really mentioned the design itself. Like I've talked about it a bunch, but the frame members are designed with pockets and holes and a lot of bridging in them, which works really well, but it's designed to reduce the amount of filament required to produce all these pieces. The print orientation is well configured right in the files. Heck, these print in place hinges for the doors, they just work pretty darn well. The whole system is clearly well thought out by people who understand 3D printing. And I mean, it still took a fair amount of filament to make something this off book and big, somewhere I would say in the neighborhood of nine to 10 kilograms of it, but it was fun to produce, if nothing else. There's also solid instructions for this whole thing that as a male presenting person, I totally didn't look at until after I created this monstrosity. If you're interested in picking up these files for yourself, head to the link in the description. The Kickstarter is now live and you can get in on it too. So. Thanks for coming around, folks. Get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. Normally, I'd walk off camera right now, but I'm not getting up from here. I'm almost 40. Bye.